Okay, okay. Super. Thank you, guys. So, uh, Boris is the the technical director of uh, of Census, which was formerly Ceres, right, uh, Boris? Great. So, the Observatoire de Paris. Uh, with here today, we're here with us today. So, Boris, uh, take it away. You 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 prepared an experiment for Opsat One, and you've been accepted. And uh, this is just the beginning. And uh, we'd love to hear about you know what it's going to be about. Uh, you know, astrometry on board of that one. So the floor is yours. I'm going to to manage your slides. You you can you can pin me to, to switch slide. Yes. Sorry, um, is they muted? Mm. Yeah, yeah, Arthur. Super. And can, can, can I start? Yes, you can go ahead. Okay, so uh, please note that there is a question mark at the end of the title of this talk. So can we make astrometry on board uh, OPSAT-1? And that is still a question. So this is my, this is, uh, okay, can you, can you hear me or? Yes, yes, all fine. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I was disturbed. So, um, uh, I, uh, please, next slide. I won't. I won't uh, make a long introduction. So uh, we we just. Uh, I just remind you that we are trying to uh, focus on the next generation of CubeSat for science, and we target uh, deep space CubeSat uh, just for the context. So we are interested in providing support to scientific teams. Next slide. So uh, one of the technology we would like to, 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 to deal with and to master is uh, to make astrometry uh, with normal, normal uh, non-satellite hardware. Uh, but astrometry can be very useful for various scientific applications or also for various technologies like uh, deep space navigation or here on my example, it's for science. Here you've got a wonderful picture. I don't think you can get it from a, from a nano satellite camera, but you've got a wonderful picture of Jupiter and Saturn in the same field of view. Maybe if you go to the next slide, we put it in negative and you can distinguish that we have uh, uh, moons of the planets, of both planets in blue and stars in the background in red. And uh, thanks to that, we can precisely determine some new uh, confirmations or some new uh, fits for uh, physical models of the motion of the moons and then it confirms or it details some theories uh, that are behind. So astrometry is very the, the, the entry point of a lot of science. So next slide. Here in our case, uh, I'm interested in, in a, uh, improving the measurement we can get. Uh, oops, we lost you. Um, lost Boris. What is? Hey, Boris. Oh, the same. Right here, you see. Uh, it, yes. Sorry, we lost you for is ten seconds. Okay? Yeah, we lost you for ten seconds. Okay. So, so my, my purpose at the moment is to uh, test and characterize a, a new algorithm to improve the measured direction of a celestial body in the background that you can see in the, in the, in the picture uh, as a blue dot here and uh, based on the measurements of the stars, of known stars that you've got also in the same field of view. And, uh, Combining everything together is quite challenging on board, and we'd like to do that on board. On ground, it's a technique that is well mastered. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, they reach accuracy at a milli arc second accuracy, but they do that on, on ground. I want to do that on board, and I want to do that with CubeSat hardware, so we target sub arc second accuracy uh, at the best. So the algorithm behind, I won't detail it now because 
it's not exactly the message I want to tell you uh, right now. Uh, so next slide. Yep. But the idea is, okay, it should be easy with the CubeSat hardware because typical CubeSat imager is an imager with a multiple degrees field of view, let's say a 10 degree field of view typically. Uh, also, although it is specialized in Earth observation, so okay, we are, we, we are about to look at uh, the, um, the black sky, so let's see how it, uh, it will behave. And we've got ADCS, so Attitude Determination and Control System, that provides an absolute pointing error at about 0 0.1 degree, and Attitude Knowledge error uh, between 15 and 30 arc seconds typically. So we think, okay, we can, we can point to the target we are, uh, we are interested in and expect some pictures of targets and stars. Stars, indeed, because uh, typical hardware claim that they are sensitive up to magnitude 6. And a star field of 10 degrees, so you can see that on the bottom right, uh, a star field uh, of uh, radius 5 degrees, so diameter 10 degrees, yes, uh, should it should provide a field of view with at least 10 stars up to magnitude 6, greater than magnitude 6, at least 10 stars. So, okay, we should have many stars in, in our field of view. Uh, let's uh, try an experiment with OPSAT. I will talk about OPSAT uh, and uh, we'll make some statistics and see if our algorithm can make that solid and can improve the, this kind of accuracy. So, OPSAT is a very cool uh, project by ESA ESOC uh, in Darmstadt. So, OPSAT 1 is a three unit CubeSat. Uh, they've got in the box, they've got a, a SEPP, that SEPP, which is a layer to interface to some hardware like the imager or the pointing systems. The, a, the pointing system is the uh, AI, uh, so ADCS provided by Berlin's Best Technologies. So we've got reaction waves. You, you can see on the top right the ADCS with a star tracker. We can distinguish uh, at least three reaction waves, maybe maybe I see four. We see magnetoctors, and uh, the star tracker claims to be uh, sensitive up to magnitude six, and it's 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 um, pointed in the x y plane, and the imager on on board is uh, also provided by Berlin Space Technologies. Uh, is pointed to minus z, so in the longitudinal axis. So that could be a problem, not to point in the same plane like the star tracker. Okay, let's see. Um, the field of view is 10 degrees, so as expected. Also, maybe another challenge, it's not a monochromatic imager, it's a, um, a color uh, camera, so with a Bayer pat pattern matrix, so, so alternating uh, alternating red, green, green, and blue pixels. But there are a lot of pixels, so 4 million pixels, and the raw picture is coded on 12 bits. So we suggested to use uh, this hardware, and our experiment was uh, selected. We got the uh, ID number uh, 156, and uh, we know that we have first to characterize what we can do with that hardware. So our experiment is astrometry. But first, so we expect a foreground object, we use uh, star fields, known stars, and we take one of the stars as the object of interest and we demonstrate our algorithm. That's fine. But in addition to that, because we want to characterize, uh, we need to characterize the, the hardware, we'll have a good assessment of the stability of the platform. And my point, and thanks to Red, or because of him, uh, in, prepare, in preparing this uh, talk, I thought, okay, maybe we could have that as an open source project. Maybe we could have the characterization of the stability of the platform as an open source project. So I'm not talking with, uh, with the agreement of OPSAT team at the moment, so I'm just uh, suggesting that uh, we also have to see if they agree, but maybe if people are interested, we could do that all together as a professional amateur project, for instance. Next slide. Uh, yes, so at first, with this hardware on OPSAT, we need to see stars. Then uh, OPSAT team provided me with uh, some, uh, some pictures. Actually, we, 
they were very, very, very helpful. So we tried with two millisecond pixels, uh, with two millisecond exposure time, then uh, 50, then 100, then 120. Okay, then I started to, to, to post-process the pictures and I see clearly that from one picture to the other, I ha I've got the same hot pixels. So hot pixels mean that they are the same pixels bright on multiple images, so meaning they are dead, they are dead. And there are a lot of hot pixels. Okay, so maybe we can have other picture of stars. So, but no, they were cosmics. Cosmics, uh, cosmics are not dead pixels, but they are very uh, numerous. So here you've got a spectrum of the, of the pixels and, uh, okay, yes, thank you, Red, you, you are right, you should push me to, to go a bit quicker. So, bad news, bad news is uh, we've got a lot of hot pixels that we don't care. We've got a lot of cosmics that we don't care. And the problem is that we don't see stars. But then, next slide, suddenly, one day, uh, the OPSAT team, and thanks to Vladimir and Dominique in particular, they, uh, we, we have to see stars. So we exposed 500 milliseconds, and they wrote to me, okay, we start seeing something. It's, so we, we, I think you can see three, three white dots on the left, and they are the same on the right. So different picture showing the same pattern of stars. Okay, so uh, in order to see that, they had to clean uh, rapidly the, the picture, and then maybe go to the next slide, and we, yes, indeed. Maybe go to the next slide, so, so we've got the negative picture, Okay, so for sure we see stars this, this time. And uh, Dominique went to astrometry.net, which is the, uh, the reference to characterize an image of the sky. And indeed, we got a match with astrometry.net. It was confirmed. So next slide. And so I should see a star in this region of the picture, but I can't see it. So why is that? Next slide. Indeed, let's make a negative picture. We've got some, some pixels here. And next slide. Okay, now we can see it. So after cleaning the picture, indeed, we can see stars. They are really not as expected. We expected something very limited to one or two pixels. And we've got something that is spread over tens of pixels. Next slide. And once we see that, when, once we know that, so I made a post-processing, a systematic post-processing, and indeed, in this same picture, we could see up to 13, maybe 14 stars. Each star is diluted in many, many pixels. And if you make a total signal-noise ratio of each star, so accumulating the signal that is spread over pixels, then indeed, you, you've got bright stars. So the pity is that the brightest star here that is quite invisible, is a magnitude 3.5 star exposed during 0.5 seconds. So if you know a little about uh, um, astronomic picture, so it's just a, a crime to, to dilute so much flux uh, and to make it uh, invisible. Next slide. And so the reason is that uh, these pixels were spread and were uh, hidden in a range of the histogram that is above the noise, for sure, that is uh, limited by the, so the noise itself is, is limited by the red uh, vertical line, and behind the green vertical line, we've got, uh, so uh, five sigma, five sigma uh, signal, so meaning that it cannot be noise anymore, it cannot, it just cannot be. So there are completely diluted in this region of the uh, histogram. But okay, if we clean up, if we clean up the sky, the, the pictures, we can see them. And astronomy.net can also see them. And mm. just just come back a little. Uh, astronomy.net tells us also the region of the sky with an exact match of the orientation of the field of view. So that's very interesting. So next slide. And if we go further, if we expose to 800 milliseconds with the same uh, imager, then we can clearly see the drift of the satellite during the exposure time. 
but not only the drift, we can also see some kind of wobbling or a vibration because transversely to the drift, we still have some pixels that receive signal. So that's, uh, that, that's probably not the, a good setup. We should limit ourselves to 500 milliseconds. But at least we've got a good setup to make astronomic pictures. Okay, next slide. So, there is, uh, in order to get the stars really visible and to characterize the field of view on the sky, we, I had to make a post-processing, which is a complicated one, with a lot of cleaning, then we, and after we have to tag astronomy.net information to put that in the picture and so on and process that. And it's partially manual. Uh, for instance, on the top, you've got a star as seen during the cleaning process. So this is a, the, the raw picture on the left, and uh, you can distinguish a hot pixel on the, on the bottom of this. Yes, it's this one here. And on the right, you've got a convolution of this star, which makes it much easier to see and to characterize. And on the bottom, you've got a, a cosmic, typical cosmic that is uh, heating the CCD from the edge. So that's why it's illuminating two pixels at the same time. But then on the convolution picture, it really looks differently. So that's how we can clearly distinguish uh, both. So, but anyway, the process is quite boring and it's quite uh, uh, long, complex, and partially manual. And we'd like to have this process uh, conclude in VTS formatted file. So, Rashika uh, in the previous uh, talk uh, presented VTS uh, displayer, uh, which is a CNES uh, software. Next slide. And indeed, uh, we, we'd like to produce the results of this analysis as a VTS reconstructed mission in order to understand and to interpret what was the stability of the platform at the time we took the images and what we were exactly looking at while the onboard ADCS was assessing some point. Okay, I've got one minute. So we want to go up to this kind of post-processed uh, products. Next slide. On our side, we've got a clean room, we've got some cuts, we've got a, a nanosatellite imager, it's not the same like OPSAT, we've got reaction, we, we could reproduce what's really happening in the, in the CubeSat. So that's what we want to focus on with our hardware, with our um, large facility, and we think we can interpret uh, what's happening on board. Next slide. And then on the post-processing part, I think we could share something and maybe it will help OPSAT1, for sure it will help OPSAT1. Maybe it will also help OPSAT2 uh, at the stage of the design. Maybe we can provide them with new specification, tell them, okay, be careful guys, you've got a real problem with the control law here because it was wobbling. What do you expect to do with the next generation? And so on and so on. We can also suggest uh, shielding uh, the imager and how much shielding we need because we uh, can process this kind of pictures. And for everybody who is trying to design a CubeSat, I would say, please, uh, when you buy your ADCS by Blue Canyon Technology, Behind Space Technology, Easy Space, wherever you want, characterize your ADCS. Don't think it will work exactly as in your dreams. We, yeah, I call that Process Sky Pictures. It's a new project on, on the public gitlab.com. So you can access it with this QR code. If you want to join uh, the party, please, uh, please tell me, tell me, and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can maybe offer this project to upset a new generation of experiment, experiments, and we'll see if they're interested. Thank you, Red, for this Thanks. great operation support. <laughs> thanks a lot thanks a lot for for your flexibility and and uh, yeah we can upload uh, you I think this is this is great uh, we have a question from Andres we'll just take one question but please write down your questions so that Boris and Ashika can uh, can answer the questions uh, the project around image acquisition and post-processing on CubeSats are surely groundbreaking how can we make a con and contribute to this project sustainably long term and full time not as a hobby but professionally not prof pro-amp, but more pro in the future, in the long term. 
Well, uh, no, no problem. I'm talking about ProAM because um, I, I think that there is a broad audience in this open source CubeSat workshop. Oh, by the way, I called the release of Process Sky Picture, which is the first release, I called it OSCW. So, ah. just for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if it becomes famous in the future, then you can say, okay, I started working uh, on that uh, with the EOS OSCW version. Well, uh, just contact me. I would say. Yeah, just contact exactly. Me. I invite you, Andres, to contact okay. Boris. And uh, Boris, thank you again once more. And uh, this is a great project. I hope uh, I can use it also on my uh, ground uh, uh, telescope, actually. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? I, I hope you, you have less cosmics. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And you good vibration.